This year's presidential election is about choices. And Donald Trump is making it very clear exactly what he'll do if reelected, especially when it comes to race and immigration. On the campaign trail, Trump has falsely accused migrants of a, quote, border bloodbath and uses dehumanizing language when he talks about them. They're sending prisoners, murderers, drug dealers, mental patients and terrorists, the worst they have in every country all over the world. Uh, the Democrats say, please don't call them animals. They're humans. I said, no, they're not humans. They're not humans. They're animals. Trump and his allies are also threatening to carry out mass deportations, use mi migrant detention camps, and potentially bring back the zero-tolerance policy that put children in cages. This week, Trump attended a gala for the director of the family separation program and hasn't ruled out reinstating it. And while Trump's attacks on asylum seekers are certainly racist, there's so much more. Have you heard about his plans to uplift only white people? Axios reports that Trump wants the Justice Department to roll back protections for people of color to focus on discrimination against whites. Trump's allies have already been testing this anti-DEI framework in court and managed to block billions in pandemic relief for women and minority-owned businesses. There's one mastermind behind all these cruelty-as-the-point policies, and his name isn't Donald Trump. Meet Stephen Miller the former Trump White House advisor and far-right extremist plotting Trump's nightmarish second term. Joining me now, MSNBC political contributor Jelani Cobb. He's a staff writer for The New Yorker and dean of the Columbia Journalism School. Also with me is investigative journalist Jean Guerrero. She's the author of Hate Monger, Steve Miller, Stephen Miller, Donald Trump, and the White Nationalist Agenda. Jean, Jelani, thank you both very much for coming to The Saturday Show. Jean, Help us understand Stephen Miller's ideology. What, what's his vision for America? His vision is a white nationalist America, and this agenda that you described is something that he's been dreaming about for a very long time. In my book, I trace how Miller was radicalized as a teenager by far-right provocateurs who believed that racism against black and brown people was not a problem and that the real problem in American society was racism against whites. This is an idea that originated with white supremacists like David Duke, who in the 1970s was calling white men the, quote, real second-class citizens in America. But while back then it was largely rejected and fringe, in 2024 it's mainstream GOP politics, mm -hmm. thanks to mm -hmm. Stephen Miller. Mm -hmm. and, and Jelani, Miller's law firm released this ad in October 2022. Listen to this. When did racism against white people become okay? Progressive corporations, airlines, universities, all openly discriminate against white Americans. Racism is always wrong. The left's anti-white bigotry must stop. We are all entitled to equal treatment under law. Jelani, the floor is yours. Well, I mean, it's interesting. Uh, I would point uh, your viewers to a body of scholarly work that examines these very questions about the ways in which uh, anti-discrimination policy can be utilized against the group that has, has historically been subject to discrimination and for the group that has historically benefited from that discrimination. The name of that body of scholarship, if you want to guess and you haven't already, is critical race theory. Uh, and so this is a kind of textbook example of this very thing. Uh, I do want to make one point uh, about the earlier question, which is that this is part of a much older tradition. Uh, you know, this is the mythology of the lost cause, uh, how Confederates after the end of the Civil War actually envisioned themselves, people who had fought a war for the right to buy, sell, rape, abuse, traffic, and exploit human beings, envisioned themselves as the victims. Uh, and that came about in the immediate aftermath of the war. Uh, if you looked in, at the debates of the 1964 Civil Rights Act, uh, one of the more notable things you hear is this same strain. Uh, Southern legislator after Southern legislator gets up and says that they are opposed to discrimination and therefore they cannot support the 1964 Civil Rights Act because they believe it discriminates against white people. Uh, and it's that same kind of playbook. So this is not a novel development. This is something that we've seen for a really long time. Mm -hmm. you, you know what, Jane? I was going to jump to immigration, an immigration question. But given what Jelani just said, I'm just wondering, how has Miller been preparing to overhaul the Justice Department? 
Well, primarily it's been through his America First legal nonprofit, which has focused on dismantling programs that are meant to benefit historically underrepresented and historically marginalized communities, um, such as programs benefiting black farmers or women-owned and minority-owned restaurants. Um, and my my prediction is that in a second Trump term, based on everything that Miller has been doing through America First Legal, we would not only see the Department of Justice weaponized to dismantle affirmative action programs benefiting people of color across the country, we would also see the creation of an affirmative action agenda focused on benefiting white people. And Jelani, then what would it mean to lose the Justice Department as a, as a backstop on safeguarding civil rights? I mean, it would be a rear guard march, no question. Uh, you know, what would happen would be uh, a kind of open season uh, for, for any kind of uh, equitable policy or practice. Anything that has addressed uh, the legacy and impact of unequal treatment of inequality, discrimination, and so on, uh, would be vulnerable in that regard. And so that's what that world might look like. And Stephen Miller would be at the center of it all. Jelani Cobb, Jean Guerrero, thank you both very much for coming to The Saturday Show. Hey, everyone. MSNBC has a new and improved app. You'll get real-time alerts and analysis, live blogs, in-depth essays, video highlights, and the best 2024 election coverage. Download the new MSNBC app. Here's how to do it. You tap on the App Store on your phone. You hit search on the bottom right corner. You type in MSNBC. You click on the MSNBC app. You click on get or the cloud icon and enjoy it.